Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm on vacation, and one thing that photographers do when they go on vacation, other people, uh, other people don't, or not photographers don't, is uh, we get up at stupid o'clock in the morning to get to locations at stupid o'clock uh, as the sun is down to even crack the horizon yet in order to catch a particular scene. It's not often that I come to a location with a specific shot in mind. Uh, that's the case here because I was here yesterday on a scouting uh, run. And what I foresaw of, well, of these um, isolated scrub pines, you know, was that one, and, with, and with this algae that's growing on the dunes that's leading up to them, that it would lead up to a very interesting composition once the sun gets high enough in the sky to actually light up the algae. It's not, I can just barely see the sun cracking over the horizon, but it hasn't gotten high enough yet. So it's going to need a couple more degrees of altitude. And then um, we'll see something which I think is going to be really nice. I'm going to try a few different variations of it. So let me bring you behind the camera and you can take a look. So as the sun rose, I decided to change location because the, the, sky, the, the sun is really sort of very nicely light up the grasses as well as the algae here. In which there wasn't so much grass where I was standing before, so I just moved over a bit. I, I can still catch the three trees. Um, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is focus on this area here. And my settings right now are f16 at one sixth of a second. I'm going to take the shot right now. Ordinarily, I would try to focus stack this, but because of the fact that the wind is blowing a bit, I'm still going to have some motion, grass, uh, motion blur in the grass, but it was going to not. It was going to make focus stacking fairly difficult. I've got a polarizer here, as you can see, is which I'm going to use to maximize the glow on the sky, on the, on the grass, as well as the sky. You can see it's not much of a sky right now. But I'm gonna take a, my first image here, two seconds, timer's on. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna take uh, that and also a, vert, a horizontal composition where I can get at least three of these trees over here. And anyway, you're gonna see the final edited results of both images upcoming. So I've returned to my original uh, location, or close to it, as the sun has gotten just a little bit higher and now starting to light up the algae as well as the grasses. Uh, I'm not going to take you right behind the camera this time, but I am going to show you uh, what I've already wound up with. So I can see now these three trees that I aimed at before, and now the sun is high enough so it's starting to light up the mounds of, uh, of, of algae. Interesting type of uh, plant formation, which I've not seen, at least not on Long Island. So anyway. I'm focusing on the uh, algae about right at the peak of the mound, just before the trees. And I'll take a few both horizontal and vertical compositions. And uh, you'll see those shots right after I take the shot. So first exposure right there. Actually, I'm going to put my two second, two second timer on, which I've somehow turned off. And here we go. So I'm going to take both uh, horizontal and vertical uh, versions of this photo and you'll see the results right now. So I'm pretty much done shooting this particular spot. Um, it's very minimalistic. I think it's going to come out nice. And, you know, by the time I'm saying this, you've already seen it. Now, if you hear some background of some birds, it's happened to be a protected nesting area for piping plovers and other, and other uh, song, uh, uh, shorebirds. The plovers particularly because they're protected, they're endangered species. So I'm going to put my birding lens on the camera, my 150 to 600, and see if I can catch some bird shots. Maybe even that osprey that was eluding me uh, back on Long Island. Maybe not that aisle, I'll speak, I'm 200 miles away from there, but uh, we'll see what we get. Well, I've got the cold air sniffles again because it's a lot colder than I expected it to be. But in any case, I've come down now to the shore and uh, on my R5, I have my Tamron 150 to 600 mounted. And I want to try and catch some bird action. 
Unfortunately, I already spooked a flock of ducks away uh, when I approached. So, on the jetty out there, there are some, some uh, gulls. I mean, I've noticed at least three species of gulls, black backs, herrings, and uh, laughing gulls. And right in front of me is the nesting area for the plovers, and I can hear them piping over there, so hopefully I can get some shots of them if they're nesting close enough. I actually, obviously, cannot actually encroach onto the nesting area, but uh, if I'm lucky enough, maybe I'll see, see some of those. So, let me go off and uh, see what I can see. Behind me, there's a pair of uh, black back gulls. Uh, I think they're just, you know, looking for shellfish. I'm going to see if I can get down a little closer to them without spooking them. You know, they're fairly approachable, but I want to take my time. So, here we go. They're walking away from me. You know what? I don't think they're me. I think they're courting. This is recording. Yeah. You synchronized the bobs and whatnot. Osprey. Well, I didn't catch the bird, but I did catch something. There's an osprey nest, actually a stand with a nest on it, occupied nest, and the bird just returned to the nest with uh, a fish. Unfortunately, I didn't see it in time to catch it as it was flying like 50 feet in front of me. But uh, I want to see if I can get over there and get a shot of the nest. Oh wait, he's leaving the nest and it's coming back. Well, it went back to the nest. I think I'm going to wait around after all and see if it comes to see if it leaves the nest and comes back or if its mate comes along. Both parents raise the, raise the young. And so if one's on the nest, one is in the air somewhere. And undoubtedly there's chicks in the nest. So I'm gonna wait around here and if that doesn't work out, I'll try and find, uh, find a way to get over to the other side of the uh, little bay here where the nest is. Hi again. I made my way up to Herring Cove Beach, which is at the very tip of uh, Cape Cod. So it's a number of hours later. It's now about five o'clock in the afternoon from where I was this morning. And I'm at the very tip of Cape Cod, looking towards a lighthouse that's behind me and to my right. I'm not sure if it's in frame, but uh, you'll see it in a second. I found a little interesting little composition that's formed by tidal patterns. Um, as the tide is receiving and it leaves little pools and that causes little patterns in the sand. And well, the uh, lighthouse is about a half a mile away. I think the composition that I found is going to at least kind of point to it and really it's going to be really about uh, abstractions and uh, lines and, and, and reflections of the sky in the, in the water. And I'm also going to use the long exposure because there's a wave action out there in the, uh, towards the lighthouse that I want to really just smooth out to really abstract the entire composition. So let me show you the composition and uh, then we'll get right to it. This composition is based on the leading lines formed by the receding tidal stream before me that leads up to the bay, just up to that lighthouse that's, up, that's uh, at the top of the, at the frame. Lighthouse is gonna be very small because of the fact I'm using a 16 to 35 lens is zoomed out to, uh, well it's actually 26, 28 millimeters right now. 
but it's you know, it's a good, a good distance away. I may I might use a little Photoshop trick to make the lighthouse bigger in the composition in, in, in final editing. I'll I'll let you know when I actually post the shot whether I did that or not. But in any case, my settings right now. Oh, I've got a polarizing filter on here because I'm I'm I'm, gonna probably, I'm basically trying to find which way basically shows the water the the, the best. There's no clouds in the sky. It's very blue, so really the the the, the sky is um, probably going to crop most of it out in the final composition. So with the 10 stop filter on, I've got F11, ISO 100, and 13 seconds. So this is going to be the first of my uh, stacks focused at the very front. I'm not going to make it sit through all four or five shots that I take of this, but I think it's going to stitch together very nicely in Photoshop and you'll see the result in a minute. Well, I think I'm going to be pretty happy with that image. Uh, as of course, you've, by now you've seen it already, so you can judge for yourself. But uh, at this point, I think I'm going to call it for the day. Just when I thought it was out, the landscape pulled me back in. On the way back to the car, I stopped to grab this image with my blocking setup. It became my favorite image of the day. Um, I did manage to salvage what I thought was going to be kind of a crappy day for landscape uh, photography. It took me all day to do it, but it worked out. So. Signing off from the uh, upper northwest coast of Cape Cod. I hope you liked this content, and if you did, please uh, give me a subscription if you're not subscribed already. And uh, please give me a like and a comment, that would really help me out. So thanks again for everything, and I'll see you next time. Probably still here on Cape Cod somewhere. Okay, bye-bye now.